Uh, so you're looking for research papers for your research. You have a research topic, and then you go to Google Scholar, and then you're searching for um, research papers. I mean, it can be really stressful. Let's demonstrate that. So let's say scholar.google.com. I come to scholar.google.com, and I want to research on maybe the, uh, let me say, child labor. Let me just use child labor, for example. Child labor and economic, economic development, for example. What's this? Child labor and economic development. Let's just see that, for example. In. Uh, let's say maybe child labor, economic development in, let's just say Africa, for example. Great. So I can see papers talking about child labor and economic perspective. That's a 1995 paper. I can see child labor in Africa in 1993. I can see um, explaining the high incidence of child labor in sub saharan Africa. I can see really nice um, papers here, right? So let's say, for example, I'm looking for a paper on Ghana. So I have to scroll, 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 or open each of these, or open each of these works to really know which of these papers is in Ghana. So for example, let me say if this Ghanaian paper really appealed to me, and then I pick it, and then I pick it, right? So each of these, So each of these, um, this paper appeals to me and I love it and I look at it and it's really amazing. And I'm looking for other papers that are really related to this paper. This may be difficult for me to do straight on Google Scholar. It might be quite difficult for me to do that. I may have to come to Google Scholar and search and search and maybe search um, Ghana, like not like I won't find it, right? Well, I may have to come back, type Ghana, come back, search them one by one, you know, open all these papers one by one, to, and then <clears throat> I have to open them to be sure that these, each of these papers are actually relevant to my research. I have to open this paper one by one. Now, from here, you cannot just know what paper is about unless you click it and you open it. Unless you open it before you can read what this paper is about. So that's um, what you would experience when you are using Google Scholar. So it's fine to use Google Scholar. It's not a bad thing at all. But Connected Papers has made it more, Connected Papers has made it more easier or more efficient for you to find related papers. Not just related papers. What I love about it is very related papers. So that's what connected papers does for you. So it reduces the time, the search time that you spend looking for relevant literature. Connected papers help reduce that time by, I would even say more than 50%. It reduces the time way, way, way um, in a very efficient way. So let's go to connected papers. So let's say I like this research and it's related to what I want to do. Now here's what I would do. I'll come to connectedpapers.com, connectedpapers.com. I'll click on this. So connected papers would give you related research. If you know what your topic is, that's one. So you can search by topic and you can search by a paper identifier. So what do we mean by paper identifier? We mean the DOI of the paper. So if you look at this paper, this is the identifier. So DOI simply means direct object, um, digital object identifier, sorry, not direct object, digital object identifier. That is what the DOI stands for. That's what the DOI stands for, digital object identifier. So I can search by copying this DOI and coming to connected papers to paste there. So it's going to bring up all the papers related to this paper. Or I can still search using that child labor and um, whatever, whatever in Ghana, right? 
and to bring out related papers that I can now use, I can now select one as the basis for that. So let me still search, let's say child labor and economic development in Ghana. Let's say that for example. So it's gonna bring up papers, it will suggest papers. So as you can see, it has brought up is women empowerment is a real game. So I have to look at all of this again to be sure that, okay. Okay, so fine. Let me say this paper appeals to me too, right? So once I click on this, it's going to build a graph around all the related papers, all the related papers around that. Yeah, so that's what it does. So um, there's a little, there are some, some, things you should know about this graph. So any graph that you see that is really any paper. So uh, I don't know how I haven't put this right now. So all these papers are, this is a paper I selected, this paper here, Owusu 2008, this is a paper. Now it has linked different papers to it. The bigger this node, so all those big circles you see here are called nodes. So the larger the nodes, it means the more citation that paper has. For example, look at this very large note here. Look at it here. The paper by Yang 2004. This paper has more citation. Okay, not Yang rather, full, full tone 2004. So what I love about connected paper is, as I take my cursor there, by the right, you can see that it already brings up information about this paper. I've not even clicked on the paper. I've not even clicked on it. I just took my cursor there and it brought up information about that paper. And I can look at it. It tells me that this paper has been cited 129 times, as you can see. So let me click on it. So you can see 129 times. This paper has been cited 129 times. So I can just scroll here at once to read what the paper is about. So it saves me the time of opening the paper, downloading the paper, trying to see if the paper relates to my work. I can do that at a glance. That's what connected paper does for you. It also shows you the graph. There's a timeline below. It tells you that the oldest paper related to this work was published in 1983. And the most recent related to this work was published in 2020. So that's what connected papers also does for you. And it does it in a beautiful graph. So um, if you want your research to be ingenious to be unique. I realized that, um, I don't know if, you're, if you have something called, um, if in your research paper, say for example, if um, your supervisor says, get me a research topic. I usually don't advise research, our research members or a research student to just get a topic straight up like that. Just give the supervisor a topic. I like that you write a rationale why are you picking this topic? Why are you interested in this topic? <coughs> are there related papers on this topic? That would show that you've really done your assignment. So a very unique way you can use connected paper is once you get a topic, you write on the topic and you, you write, I mean, what's really interested you about the topic. Maybe you grew up somewhere in, in a suburb in Ghana and then, um, you experienced child labor, maybe someone close to you or even you yourself had experienced it and you just feel like it's something that's really um, preventing development in your state because people are not really, because children are out there in school, uh, people are, children are out there on the streets trying to hawk or do menial jobs. It takes them out of school and because of that, the economy is not really developed because you have less people who are committed to education at the primary stage, like, you know, you write a rationale for it, right? Apart from the practical observation, like the practical problem that you've stated accompanying that research topic, you can also say that you use, you searched for, you can do something called a scoping literature search. That's what I'll call it. So I have a section, you can have another section called scoping literature review or scoping literature search that using this topic connected, I um, say connected paper, so sorry, child labor and economic development, you went on connectedpapers.com and then you put this and you found a relevant paper by 
Owusu 2008, and just as um, um, as demonstrated in the node, there were up to you know so so number of papers that were relevant to the study, and most of these papers were uh, majorly cited by other researchers. An example of this paper is by Yang et al. Now, in as much as I mean Futun rather, in a, in as much as Futun had done something related to this, this paper was not um, published in Ghana or did not really consider Ghana as a basis for their search or for their findings. And because of that, you would want to come up with um, a research that other Ghanaians can make use of. Like, you know, that's just, that's just the point. That's just the point. So that's something you can do. And I mean, this would really, I'm very sure that some of our supervisors don't even know what connected paper is, but somehow it just doing that just gives you, I mean, you know, that kind of star girl, star boy kind of feel that comes to it, knowing that, oh, you're the only person that can, that, you know, that did this, right? So other people are just bringing research topics, but you are bringing not just the topic, you're also bringing, showing the rationale for the topic. And you're also showing that you've done your assignments, you've done your homework, you've done a good work. So somehow it places you at a very positive um, pedestal in the in the supervisor's mind. Like it's it gives you that edge above others. So and that's something that I mean, the research the research world is really competitive. The research world is really really competitive. So if you want. If you want something that after your studies, you want supervisors to recommend you for maybe teaching positions, maybe learning positions in your universities, then this is something, I mean, you need to go a step further. I always advocate for that. Go a step further, do something different. Show that you can, I mean, you, you, can, you, you can really research outside what is being taught in the classrooms. So that's something Academic High is also trying to bring to um, members, we want to make sure that members can demonstrate ingenious research skills. Members can show that they are really unique and they are really researchers by every sense of the word. So connected papers also have by the right-hand side, it shows you other relevant papers by the right-hand side here. You can see other relevant papers here as well. So with this, you can pick papers that are really, um, you find interesting or related. So let's say, for example, if you're scrolling through here and then you see a paper said determinants of child labor prices in Ghana. Hmm, this is an interested paper, interesting paper, and it's in 2018. You <clears throat> once you click on it, by the right hand side, it's going to show you what the paper is all about. So you don't need to open, you don't need to download the paper. You don't need to open the paper. That's what I don't love about it. So at a glance, I can do everything I need to do. I can just check papers that are relevant at a glance without me opening multiple tabs and checking and checking. No, I can do everything at a glance. So that's a beautiful part of connected papers. That's how it works. And we just thought that we should bring this to, you know, we should just train on this so that people can get to really know more about it. Yeah, so that's how we searched using, that was how we searched using um, a topic. So there's a DOI I had gotten already. So let's try to search using the DOI. So when I come back to the search and then I paste the DOI, the moment I paste the DOI, this paper appears. Let me see, but let me go back to the connected, to the real connected paper search again. Now this is the search bar. The moment I paste this DOI here, you can see that the paper automatically pops up. Then I click on it. So it will ask me to wait for a while and then it starts building my graph. It starts building the graph. It's really an amazing um, tool for literature search. It's an amazing tool. So once we start learning systematic review, you will see that you can introduce connected paper in your systematic review. You can introduce it actually. So it's building the graph. It's building the graph of related papers around that paper, around that paper. So that's the graph it's building. Papers around that paper. So this is it. This is a paper by Ray. 
where's the paper again determinants of child labor okay that's ray 2002 ray 2002 was uh, oh great fine here's the paper ray 2002 so we can see much about it here there are other related papers as it can as you can see here if we pick this we can still read about it here if we pick this paper, we can still read about it here. So you can see everything at a glance, everything. And now look at, let me show you why I really love this connected paper thing. So it may not just be about Ghana, but just notice I'm gonna be hovering my cursor around this. You see that almost everything is child labor, child labor. Okay, see what's the effect of child labor on learning? Evident from Ghana. Trade-off between child labor and human capital formation. Child labor in Cote d'Ivoire. Child labor, like you can see that everything here is just child labor, child labor. I mean, it saves you time. That's the point. It saves you time doing your literature search. It saves you a whole lot of time. So we encourage you to make use of apps like this. People are building more apps. Researchers are coming up with things that are interesting. Please, let's make use of them to enhance our research skill. Did you find this video helpful? Then subscribe to this YouTube channel and comment you know just say something in the comment section to let me know that you enjoyed this video and you inspire me to do more thank you